In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to make a smart line-based detail component. Here you see one that I've created. Um, you've got gypsum board on one side, plywood on the other, um, a double top plate, and a sole plate. And this is one that you can adjust, flex, everything moves with it. You can also, if you want to turn on or off the spray foam insulation or the plywood, and the jip, you can turn those off as well. In addition to that, you can change the wall size to a 2x4 and still all those same options apply. And that's what we're going to be going over in this tutorial. So to start off, I'm, I'm going to continue on where I left off with this um, line-based detail component in a previous tutorial. Uh, if you haven't seen it and you're not sure how to get this far, I suggest you click on this link to go back and watch it. So here we've got a line-based detail component, but we're going to make this a little bit more uh, parametric. So here we've got a 2x6 with plywood and gypsum board. So to start off, I'm going to come right up here to the family types. And currently we only have one type right now. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this 2x4 wall and create another one that's 2x6 wall and then 2x8 wall. And you can do whatever walls you'd like to. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it to where when I change the size, um, the plywood and these other materials will change with it as well. So I'm going to select my dimension tool. I'm actually going to dimension from the reference line to the edge of that plywood there. And before we go into that, we need to make sure that when we edit this, there's a specific distance that this needs to be locked to. So I'm actually going to come in here when I'm editing the shape of this. And I'm going to create a parameter for the plywood thickness. So click the create parameter here. I'm going to call it ply thickness. And I'm going to keep this as a type parameter. I'll explain that a little bit more as we move on. Then I'm going to select OK with that. I'm going to do the same thing with the jip down here. And for this, I'm going to lock it to itself. Again, parameter, but this is going to be jip thickness. And again, I'm going to keep this a type parameter for now. And select OK. We can come back here and we can set a parameter for the thickness or for the distance the jip and the plywood will be from each other. We're going to call this wall thickness. And again, this is going to be a type parameter. I'll explain a little bit more about that right now. So when we come back up in here to the family types, make sure you can see, let's go down to the 2x4 wall. We're going to leave all these the same, but for wall thickness here, change that, that to 3.5, click apply. And if you notice, the thickness or the distance between the jip and the plywood has changed. So we can go in and change that for these other types to make sure they're accurate. Now if you notice here, the rigid installation didn't move with us. So I'm going to select my align tool, select this edge and align it to the rigid installation and I'm going to lock that. And with this we also need to make sure that we select a thickness here for the rigid insulation as well. And we'll select a type parameter for that too. For this, I'm going to change this to 2 inches. Let's go back in here and flex this to make sure that works. 2 by 8, it's good. Okay. 
and we're going to set this value to 2 there. So when you create type parameters for each of these different types that we have here, it, you can preset those to whatever you want. So now whenever you load this up, whatever I've put in here, well, it'll load as that type. Okay, so now we've got at least the citing materials to move like we want them to. The next step that we need is, I guess this um, masking region here, um, we need to make sure that that's aligned to the edge of the plywood and lock it, and the grid, lock it there as well. But now we need to work with the, the double top plate and the sole plate. So what we're going to do here, and this is where it, it'll look a little messy in the family editor, but it works out okay um, in the actual um, detail component. So I'm going to create a detail component, a 2 by 8 I'm going to rotate this. And here I want to make sure I align the base of it to the, the reference line, lock it. And then again, reference line, and lock this edge. I'm going to lock those. And so now we've got this one. I'm going to add two more. Oops, there we go. I'm just going to set them right here for just now. Align the base, lock, and reference, lock, and then again the sides. And the side of this 2x4 will be aligned to that side, and we lock those as well. Now this is where we get into the visibility settings. So I'm going to select just the, the bottom plate. Here under visibility, I'm going to click this little box right there, and I'm going to create a new parameter. We're going to call this bottom plate. But not just bottom plate, 2 by 8 bottom plate. We're going to make this an uh, this one's going to be a, an instance parameter because we want to be able to control this for each instance. I select OK. And then for the double top plate, we'll do the same thing. We're going to call this 2 by 8 double top plate, the instance as well. I select OK. So, so now I'm going to come in here and flex. Or instead of flexing this, I'll go to 2 by 8. I want to make sure that these two are selected on that, but for my other two walls, I don't want those two showing. We'll deselect those. Click Apply. So in the family editor, even though these aren't visible in the detail component, they're still showing here. Click OK. And then back behind here, we still have this 2x6. So I'm going to make sure we align. I'm going to tab through to get that, make sure those are aligned. Same with the side. And come in here, tab to select that. And then again, the visibility settings. I'm going to speed up through this so that way you don't get bored. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to make sure on the 2x8, we don't want the 2x6s showing. So I'll apply that. On the 2x6, don't want the 2x8 showing, and then on the 2x4, don't want those showing there. Click Apply, and we're going to go put the 2x4s in. Again, I'll speed on through this for you. Okay, and then one more thing. I'm going to also add visibility settings to the JIP as well. And I'm going to make this one an instance parameter. 
I'm going to do the same thing for the plywood. And then for the rigid insulation. And all of these are instance parameters. Then we can go ahead and load this into a project. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to make sure my settings are correct here. 2 by 4 got all those set by default. 2 by 6 don't need the 2 by 4 visible. The 2 by 8s also don't want the 2 by 4s visible. So now we'll load this into a project. It asks if we want to save changes. We'll say yes. Okay. And then we'll load it in. I already had it loaded into this file. So this is my other one. But now we'll use the detail component that we just loaded. This is wall with rigid. And if you notice here, we've got the three different types. So we'll try a two by four. A two by four wall with rigid. See what happens if we hide the rigid. Rigid disappears, plywood disappears. So does the jib. And they come on back. And then we can come two by six. Expands. Seems thing, things seem to be working pretty good in a two by eight as well. Except here we don't have top and bottom plates showing. So these we accidentally put in as instance parameters. So instance parameters you, you can change here. But if I draw another wall of a 2 by 8, I have to select these two to get them to show up. The difference between instance and type parameter, so if I go in and change any settings in the type parameter, I'm going to illustrate these with a 2 by 6 walls instead. So here with this instance, we still have the 2 by 8s showing up because they're instant parameters instead of type parameters. So let's go back into the family editor really quick. Make sure we're on 2 by 8. OK. Oops, actually, let's go back in there. So I'm going to delete these two types, this one and this one. Delete that. It's going to say yes. Delete that as well. Now that I've deleted those two types, I'm going to come back in and recreate those. New parameter, 2 by 8, bottom plate. Make sure that's type, not instance. Now, if you'd prefer to have these as instance parameters, you're more than welcome to. It just, if you get too many of them, it clouds up your left side over here. So, two by eight, double top plate. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna load this into my project. Yes, I wanna save it. Override existing versions. See what happens here. Oh, I forgot one more thing. Come back into the family editor. Need to make sure for the 2x4 wall that these are not visible. 2x6 wall, we also don't want the 2x8s visible. And then the 2x8 wall, we do want those visible. Select OK. Now I can close or save that and load it into the project. Override existing version. And there we go. Let's change this to a two by four. This one's a two by six. And then we'll put a two by eight in there to show you what we can do. And again, you can adjust those however you want. If you want the whole type to be without a top or a bottom plate, you're more than welcome to change that here. You can also create duplicate types and then change those so you can have 
one type with the double top plate and one type without. Or you could put a header in there, whatever you want. And that's how you make these to where you can turn things on and off in them.